Now I'm sure you know about Photoshop's amazing feature where it automatically detects the object. All you have to do is to choose the object selection tool right there and make sure object finder is checked. It does some processing in the background and now when you hover through the image, have a look, everybody right here is detected. Here's the background, here's the young lady, here's the man and now when you click on him, it probably would make a selection and it does a pretty good job. Now I know it selected a little extra leg, but it's confusing anyway. Now this is something you already knew, but what blew my mind was when I met Julianne Cost, who's the face of Adobe for decades. Yes, you got that right, I'm flexing. And she was doing a class in Nashville and she showed this feature which automatically masks everything. Let's check it out. So all of this detection that you see, what if you could create masks of everything all at once? All you gotta do is to go to the layer right here and mask all objects, that's it. Now take a look at the magic. What it does is that it creates a mask of everything that it detects. And then again, you can make any adjustments to those specific areas. So there you go. Have a look at the groups right there. These are all empty groups. So this is the mask for the entire family. So if you wanna make any changes to that, for example, make them brighter, darker, change the color, do whatever you want. You can go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Let's say you wanna brighten them so you can take it up. By the way, I am sorry, this is the mask of the background, not the family. So if you want the family, just invert it. Press Control or Command I, now it affects the family. So you get all kinds of masks for the dog, for the lady, everything is right here. For example, this is the dog one. So you can go ahead and let's say increase the saturation. Let's go to hue saturation and maybe increase the saturation of the dog, decrease the saturation, change the hue slightly. So you get absolute control over every single object in your image. Now let us take a look at some real world application of this feature. By the way, if you wanna go ahead and follow along using any of the photos in this video, check the links in the description. So have a look at this image. The subject is not as much separating from the background. So first of all, let's separately mask the objects and how do we do that? We just learned, let's go to layer and then it was in layer, right? <laughs> mask all objects. Sometimes we lose track. Anyway, now that you have the mask ready, we want to separate this wall from the subject. Have a look, this is the mask right here. So what do we do? Now there are a couple of ways in which we can create separation in Photoshop. Number one, brightness. Number two, color. And number three, can you guess? Depth of field. Now in this case, it's already blurred, so we don't need to do that. Let's first try with brightness. So with this wall mask selected, by the way, these are all empty groups. Nothing more than that. Let's create a curves adjustment layer inside that group and it automatically does it. And now we can just darken it slightly. You can also use the hand right over there. So click on the hand and just darken the bright parts like this. And the dark parts doesn't have to be that darkened. So click and drag it up. There you go, that seems nice. And have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after. It separates so nicely. Also you can change the color of it a little bit. So let's go ahead and create let me show you a trick, by the way. Let's create a gradient map. Single click right here, and from the type, instead of solid, choose noise. The advantage of this is that there's a button appears called randomize. So you can click on it and randomize colors. But then again, there's just so many colors. So decrease the roughness to about, up to your choice, I'm gonna keep it at about 5%. And now you can randomize and get whatever color you want. Now these colors are also changing the brightness. We just wanna affect the color and that's it. So hit okay for now and change the blend mode of the gradient map from normal to color so that it only affects the color. Now this is a nice color, depending upon whether you want it or not. Of course, the opacity is also too high. So let's set it to about 16%. And now you can go back right here, single click right here and keep clicking on randomize, see what works best for you, see what looks nicer to you. You can also use this technique to change colors of stuff. Have a look at the hat. It may be a little boring. So what if the color of the hat is the same as the color of the jacket? That would be interesting. So here's the hat mask right here and let's go ahead and create a hue saturation adjustment layers. Hat lovers, I'm sorry, I know this is a fantastic hat. This statement is just for example, color change is just for educational purposes. You can pick the color of the hat if you want with the help of the hand right there and single click right here. Also here's my trick of changing colors. I change the hue and the saturation all the way to the right hand side so that we can see where changes are taking place and then we play with the range to make sure everything is affected. Right here as well, all right. We extended the range and now you can change the color to whatever you wish. There you go, that's matching. You can increase the lightness as well. That is the advantage of targeting specifically. Saturation, and now we are pretty much matching, not that much, but that's all right. 
So there you go. Lots of flexibility just by masking every object. Now do keep in mind that these masks are not always perfect. For example, have a look right here. If you do a lot of change by making the background very, very dark, you will begin to see some edges, some weird stuff right here and there. So you may have to work with the mask. You may have to edit it or make it softer. But this just gives a fantastic starting point. Let us take a look at one more incredible real world example. In this case as well, we're going to go to layer and then mask all objects. Now, this is a very clear image. So I'm hoping that the masks would be better. Let's say we want to create a dramatic sky. So here we have the sky mask. So first of all, we can create a curves adjustment layer. And of course, we can darken it. So let's darken it like that. And brightest parts, we can make them brighter. Now do keep in mind that these masks may not be absolutely accurate. So you may have to select the mask, take the brush, white as the foreground color, and probably fill up the rest of the areas. I'm decreasing the flow to about 20%. Just a little bit, fill here and there, that's it. Let's come back to the curves adjustment layer. Let's make it a little milder. And you can also change the color of the sky if you wish. By the way, for color grading, one of the plugins that I always love to use is Infinite Color Suite. It is indeed the best color grading plugin in the market because you don't have to do a lot of adjustments. You just have to click on create and it generates the color grading for you. So let's bring this group inside the sky group right there. And you have to just click on create. That's it and it generates different kinds of color grading for you. And everything is adjustable. Have a look, all of these are adjustment layers. And I've been using this for, I don't know, four or five years. Remember, we created a video about it four or five years ago. Here's that. And in all of these adjustment layers, let's say you don't want the curves or the color balance, you can turn it off or on or shuffle just the color balance or just the curves, up to you. So let's click on create, stop at what you like, and then we can modify it from there. So let's say we like this color. It's a little warmer color. And in here, I like the overall effect, but I may not like what curves is doing. So we can shuffle just the curves. And then we can always go back and adjust it to our liking. By the way, if you're interested in the infinite color panel, check the link in the description for the latest discounts. This area looks a little weird because we haven't still worked on the other areas. So here's the mountain mask right there. So let's create another curves adjustment layer and we can take it down. Now it's probably matching. We may have to make the mask a little softer, but apart from that, that's fine. And you can go on and on from here. So here's the person, you wanna make him pop, so you would create a curves adjustment layer. You would just increase the contrast, just like this. There you go, that pops. And then you might wanna have to add a little bit of vibrance. So there you go, add a little vibrance. So the idea here is just targeting different areas and working on them separately. And as for the object selection tool, this is how you take it beyond all of these detections by going to layer and then mask all objects. And especially in this example, it did an incredible job of not only detecting all of these objects, but their reflections as well. Have a look right here. Here's the reflection of this boat. Here's this boat. So you can just dial in everything specific to that specific object. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to especially thank Julian Cost for this tip and also all of this amazing and nice people for supporting Pix Imperfect on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.